Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the player ratings. Everton won. West Ham United nil. First victory of the season for the Toffees. Perfect timing just before the international break. And uh, all good. All, all good. A tight game. Always, always was going to be. Um, West Ham came. I don't know. They came. They play. They play like we do. Essentially, when we play away, they play. With um, getting five behind them, five at the back, or they played like we used to. So, you five at the back and then shut out the midfield, and um, yeah, it can. It's very difficult to break down, like like we like we've seen with the way we play. So, um, it needed a a good goal, um, a good strike. We haven't had too many of them this season. They were hard, They were really difficult to break down. Um, I think we'd only had something like one shot. Before we'd scored the goal, so, um, but we got the three points again. Again, defensive built on defensive the defence and, um, which was superb today and will be reflected in my uh, in my player ratings. So just glad to get the three points. It's out the way now. The win is out the way. No more court. It's great having good performances, decent performances, um. But when you're waiting for that first win of the season, you know, seven games in, um, the pressure can start to build outside more than inside. I think as fans, we've been watching it since, you know, s develop since the first couple of games of the season where we got beat. And um, we're behind, with you know, we're behind what's going on. So, and the managers obviously know what he wants, you know, in terms of the um, the, 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 the defence and the centre backs and getting in two very reliable centre backs and it's made a huge difference with the way we've defended. So fantastic stuff. Let's get into it anyway. In goal, Begovic obviously um came in. No no real issues. Made one good save in the second half. Um that he had to. He did <laughs> he did sort of whistle one away when the one at the post. Um, when he just stood and watched it. But what I would say is, if he dived for that shot, it could have hit him and gone in. So, clever stuff from Begovic there. He knew what his angles were. He knew it was hitting the post. And he probably thought, if I dive, this might hit my arse and go in. And I'll look stupid. So, who's stupid now? You know what I'm saying? Genius. Genius. But he did fine. Did fine. Um, a couple early on, I thought from corners he got under, but most game nice and steady, uh, and done his job. To be fair, decent decent performance from him. I've given him a seven. Um, Nathan Patterson, excellent again, really really good again, solid in the tackle, aggressive, wants to win his battles, um, doesn't want to be beaten in the tackle. Doesn't want anyone to go past them, but contributes going forward as well. Always a, always a will and runner. Always an outball. Um, if it, it's just a pity we haven't got. It's just a, a pity we haven't got someone who can switch the play a little bit quicker in our midfield. Otherwise, our fullbacks would be on all the time, all the time. They're always free, and at times I think. We, if we if we just had players who could get their heads up and switch the ball quickly, we'd be in so often. Um, but it, it seems to be a dying, dying art in football, doesn't it? Someone who can pass the ball 60 yards. But he was brilliant. And, and what typified his... What typified his... Um, his game was towards the end. And I didn't even know it at the, at the time. The one that um, Schumacher's put wide. But Schumacher's in. And Patterson just gets a touch on it and takes it away from his foot. And the ball just goes... Because where I'm sitting, I can't see that. And the ball... He looks like he's trying to go down round Begovic. Um, and I thought he'd score, to be honest, at first. But the touch by Patterson, he doesn't give up on it. He doesn't just let him get a shot. As he's pulling his foot back, Patterson just gets a touch and knocks it. And that is a... That is a match-winning tackle, a match-winning tackle that from Nathan Patterson there. It's just, just they're the things in games where 
you look at maybe you look at other players or from other teams and you like you think of little things like that but I don't know who was who took the shot by the way I, I only seen the video might have been corner I don't know um I've only seen the video of the tackle I wasn't even paying attention to who it was but um he just puts his foot he just gets his foot in there and it's just it's just an incredible incredible tackle which you, you if he hadn't made that tackle and they'd scored no one would have said anything about that that's the thing that's how good a tackle it is um so just brilliant i've given him a nine on it i can't speak high, highly enough about him um just can't speak highly enough about him at all just just absolutely brilliant uh, Mike Cosgrove on the Super Chat. Thanks, Mike says. That's an Everton team I can get behind. Thought Garner, man of the match, closely followed by Patterson. Yeah, superb. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I've given him a nine. Uh, Mikhailenko on the other side. I thought he started a little bit ropey. He let Bowen get the better of him. And Bowen put a lovely ball in. And, and Connor Cody, to be fair, made a brilliant block to go for a corner. Um... But he grew into the game, and I think as the game went on, he got more and more into it, started winning the battles defensively. Offensively, I, I, I don't think he's... I don't think he's um, the kind of player who's going to give you what maybe our last two left-backs give us, but defensively, I think he, he grew into the game. I've given him a seven. Um, as I said, a little bit of a shaky start, but I think I think he grew into the game. Um, the centre-back's Connor Cody captain the team brilliantly absolute leader this is exactly what we've been missing for the last few years is someone who understands how to defend which is not always a normal thing by the way people who smell danger i've said this so often some of our defenders and michael Keane has been guilty of this all the time the they, they wait for things to happen Rather than intervening in them, Connor Cody completely understands how to defend. He's just—it's just such a dying art that, as an Evertonian, I've been brought up with this. Completely brought up with it since I was a child, all the way through. And it's in in the last few years, it's been something that's been missing so much. Yeah, he mean I can do it to a point. But somewhat, I just honestly can't speak highly enough of Conor Cody and what he brings. And his leadership is just huge, huge. If I was honest, no, if I was Everton, right, I'd try and just get the deal done now to sign him and make him our player. That's how much I think he... he, he, he I don't think anyone ever thought, like, you know, when he signed for his own thing, anyone thought, oh, he's a red and all that. I don't think anyone was like that. But obviously him, the goal he got in the derby, obviously that was disallowed. You could see what it meant to him. You could see what it meant to him today. Um, and there was about five minutes to go or we were just going into injury time. And he was, I think one of our players was down or something like that. And he's like saying to him, you know, he's saying to the team, get up, get up for this. This, this, you know, you could see how much it meant to him. Three points, experiencing his first three points. Well, first experience his first three points playing for Everton at Goodison Park. But you could see how much it meant to him. Dragon players up, and I just thought, I just love that side of football that doesn't get spoken about, or in this in this age of like analytics and stats and all the rest of it, you can't quantify leadership. You can't quantify players dragging another player or getting in the face of the opposition. You just can't quantify what that means. And we haven't had that for so long. And now we've got two. Now we've got two. And, you know, Everton as a club have done so well to bring these two players in. And I don't care if they're both 29 or whatever they are. I couldn't care less. You know, it's for the younger players to learn off them. So I've give I've given them an eight anyway. I've given them an eight. Um, James Tarkowski next to him. Um, as, one thing, I, well, this is what I was going to say about Connor Cody. On the ball, Connor Cody was um, was really good as well, playing some lovely balls. Um, maybe that's just one thing that Tarkowski, Tarkowski, Tarkowski playing on the left side maybe is something that he 
just lacks occasionally on the ball. Um, early on the game, he was getting the ball, you know, when it goes back to Cody. Maybe this is just, he's a defender. He's a defender, isn't he? And I think, you know, and he's, listen, he still want, there was, you know, between there were very few mistakes. There was a, one late on where the ball thing just like bounced over their heads or something, and but there's very few mis- make very few mistakes. There are, there are the odd one, I appreciate that, but they want to defend. They want to get their head in there. They want to, no, they don't want to get hurt, but they're not. They don't mind being hurt. And um, James Tarkowski was the same today. He, again, just he, he wants to defend, and we kind of called him next to him. They're just a brilliant partnership in terms of in terms of games like this where they're edgy and it might take a set piece. I mean, set pieces. Look how much better we 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 look on set pieces now. The organisation and people getting their heads in the way, and there's so much more confidence in our defending, and it comes from those two. So I've give uh, James Klarkowski a seven and a half. Uh, Garner sitting in front of them, brilliant, impeccable. Just does his job perfectly. Just wins the ball, gives it. Played that lovely pass a couple of times that he used to play all the time. That round the corner, back to the centre back on the other side. Ball just breaks things up and gets us going. And I thought, again, just looked like he looks like he's been an Everton player for ages, doesn't he? Anyone who had any issues of signing, uh, you know, again a player who's in his thirties, you've seen what he what he can give us today. Just worth every penny. Worth every penny of what we pay, what we're paying him, um, just effortless, absolutely, because he's class. Because that's what good players do; they're effortless. They, and he, he is, he's class. I've given him an eight today. He just he sees the danger, gets a foot in, plays it nice and simple. Just give, again, he's another leader on the pitch. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Onana, I actually thought today. This was I thought he played within himself a little bit, oh nah, it. I don't I don't think he was poor by any means, because he wasn't, clearly. And he again a couple of more of those brilliant trademark tackles. I just thought he looked a little bit off the pace slightly. Um a little bit slower than I've than we've seen him in other games. Maybe he'd been given a particular job in the midfield and that was a case of, uh, the, the, there was a case of, you know, not not going away from that. I just thought he played a little bit within himself and it led to a little a couple of mistakes here or there passing, um, but he but he was fine. He was fine. Just thought it was, there was just times, and this was a general thing in the first half where we slowed the game down too much. And I thought I thought he was a little bit of a culprit to that of of slowing the game down. Um, I don't think he always looks like he's got the ball under control as well. Um, which can be a little bit of issue. And he was up against, listen, Declan Rice is class act, isn't he? He's a class act. But yeah, I thought I thought Onana was just a little bit, just again, you've got to appreciate what's this. Was that his third start in the Premier League? Is that right? Third start? Or fourth start, is it? Fourth start um, in the Premier League. So you've got to appreciate that as well. Um, but he was fine and he enjoyed... Uh, enjoy doing a video with the Gladys Street at the end, uh, which is a first. I've seen, obviously, seen other players do it, but it was a first to see an Everton player do that, take a phone out and do that. Don't know where he'd been hiding the phone, but um, so I like all that, and I think the fans will love all that. Um, so I've given Onana a seven. A Wobi, um, nice and tidy, uh, did really, really well for the goal, just broke the lines. That's exactly what we need from, from him. Breaking the lines, getting the ball into Mopai. Um, lo- few lovely little tricks, little nutmegs and drag backs and all those kind of things. Always looks like he knows what he's going to do with the ball. Always knows, looks like he's going to. He's well, he doesn't always look like he is in control of the ball as a fan, but yeah, that's his own particular style. Um, and he uses it almost to. I think he does it to like draw people in, almost like he's gonna. He, he it almost feels like he's not got control and he's just drawing the player in. Then he's gonna use a little trick. He gets himself out of some really, really tight situations. But again, just again, just um, played the game he's been playing in recent weeks and and, and done his job. I've given him a seven point seven five. Um, 
as I said, got the assist for the goal. Just like to see him do that more often. Drive forward the ball a little bit more. Link up, drive drive with the ball. And this this will come from playing with better players and the team playing more together. Um, just drive forward, break those lines. Because we do have a little bit of an issue with the front three, let's be honest. It's... Well, we'll come on to that in a minute. But, yeah, I think... Um, again, it will be... Well, we was really good today. Uh, Gray put some lovely balls in, played one after we'd scored the second. Fizzed it across and all it needs is a tapping again at the back post. Um, just just needs a tapping at the back post. But again, there's times with Gray where he just wants to... I understand what he's doing. He just wants to, he wants to slow it down so he can use his burst of pace to get away from people and i understand that it's just at times i just think don't slow the game down there's times he's given the ball and you think just run at them you, they're, they're, they're not going to get men back and he'll slow it down and then that allows them to get men back and then he speeds it up and it's just like no no hit them while hit them while they've got um while they've got you know n- numbers forward um, it's sometimes just a little bit too too slow in in that in that term. I just wanted to run a pace, but he likes to he likes to slow it down, as I said. But it, it can be annoying. But he did he did all right. He did okay. Again, I think first half it was difficult. Him 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 and Gordon weren't, weren't really affecting the game at all. Um. You want them to be wide, but obviously you want the fullbacks wide as well. But it's they're just not. I don't know. They're just not. They weren't linking up properly. I think he got a little bit more joy second half. Uh, I've given him a seven. Gordon, I thought he was poor. I thought he was very poor. If I'm honest. Um. Okay, so when Anna was using the fans' phone, fair, fair play. Um, I thought I thought Gordon was poor. I thought he looked. You no know one he reminded me. He reminded me of Delafeu. When Delafay used to always be blown out of his ass after twenty minutes, like there was serious times in the game where he's like, there was one way I think it came from, I think it was just after we scored, and the ball was played across the box. I think it was the wrong choice, but it got to Gordon. But he was like, he was like labouring. It was like it was like I was running after him, and then there was just moments where he was given. He was given the, the 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 man he was supposed to mark far too much space, and then he quickened up towards the end, towards you know a little towards as he was getting to. Him. I don't know whether his fitness his fitness looks an issue to me in terms of general fitness, like like getting around the pitch for ninety minutes. It, it it doesn't look like someone who can play for ninety minutes. It doesn't look like for someone who can sprint and then be fine. He looks like someone who sprints and then needs five minutes to recover. Like again, like when I used to play Sunday League, <laughs> and that's that's an issue if you're a professional footballer. You need to be on it all the time, and yet he looks leggy. He looks like he needs a little break every time he has a sprint, and that's, I think that's a, um, I don't, I don't, yeah, I think that's that's an issue that he's got to sort out. I just thought he was poor all game, and I was no surprise that he got dragged off. I thought he was crap. <laughs> I mean, as I'm going along, I'm getting wet, saying he's worse, but there's times where he just doesn't take responsibility for for like the play he's supposed to be marking or the job. Like at no time today did he ever look threatening, and at no time did he look. There was a couple of moments where he got back and he put a foot in and stuff like that, but I thought his all round play was was poor. And where is first half? I'd go well, okay. They had loads of men back and they were keeping it tight. And all that kind of thing. Second half, you know, certainly after we scored, Gray started to get a lot more joy. And yet he just looked tired. So I I people make excuses for him, and I don't understand why they make excuses for him. He's a Premier League footballer who should he's got talent and we've seen the talent. And I just for me, it, anno- it annoys me. It annoys me. It, I think people have seen this. Um, it annoys me when players 
aren't doing the basic job they're required to do. And I think the difference is he's he's standing out because at the back end of last season, he was the one putting the effort in maybe when other people were, but the team's changed a lot since then. And he hasn't quite gone up with it. And I think he needs maybe in the next couple of weeks just... Just I don't know whether it's a fitness issue or whatever, but I I was I was really disappointed with him today. I've given him a five five point five. Really disappointed with him because the last two home games he's been crap, absolutely crap. And again, the major issue I see is a fitness issue. Um, so talented player, very talented player when he wants to, but he just doesn't look like he can get around the pitch. Um, Mopai got the match winner, didn't he? And that's all that really matters. Worked hard again. First half really difficult for him to to get hold of the game because cause where he's playing and and stuff. But second, that you, you could see him trying to drop in and get trying to get a little bit of a feel of the ball. Players like you know out of the game for ages. They come in and they try and drop in and they try and get a feel of the ball and get into it. Um, but he. he he stayed in the game and he took his he took his he took his goal brilliantly. He took his goal brilliantly and was always a threat. Always joined up really well. Okay, listen, he's not today. We could have done with a with a Dominic Carvalho Lewin just because we needed an out ball and and things like that. But he done his job. Um, and he scored his goal, and that's all you want, you know. Second start, and he's got a goal. That's all you can ask, isn't it? You know, one and two for Everton. That's not bad. Um, so yeah, I've given him an eight because, of course, he got the match winner. I'm not going to really. I'm not going to say. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't rubbish. He was, when he was in the game, he joined in really, really well. So, um, just everyone's got a different, and uh, you know, way of uh, of saying his name as well. It is Neil Mopai, and that's that's it. That's the way he's going to be said. Um, yeah, I've given him an eight. It's good to win a goal. It was a great goal as well, to be fair. It was a really well taken goal. Um and and sometimes you just need that in games like that. Just in games like that, just a little bit of class. It's a little bit different. That's what separates the two sides. It was a it was a good goal. So I'll give him an eight. Um just before I move on from the subs, one thing I would well ugh, Everton set pieces, man, they're absolutely awful, aren't they? This is something we've got to get sorted. You know, whether the whether it's grey or whether it's um <laughs> Michael Engel took one, it was terrible. Set pieces or something Evan have got to sort it out, haven't they? We've got to. Put put a Wobie on them. Put a Wobie on the set pieces. But they are garbage. Like in a game like that again where it's close. That can be the difference. And we've got big men in the box, but the set pieces are rubbish. Gotta sort that out. Anyway, on to the subs. Uh the Core. Great to have a sub like the Core, isn't it? Ready to come on. You know, after you know, after six, seventy minutes, whatever it is, it's great to have players like him coming on. Um, he did all right, apart from when we had the break late on in the game. We had something like a four on three, and he tried to play the hardest ball in the world. We were in injury time, and he tried to play some mad ball when he could have, even if he just kept hold of it and run into the corner, it would have wasted more time. He basically kicked it back to their player, which was so annoying, so annoying. Um, I've given him a six point five. He was, but that's so I hate that. That was a chance to wrap the game up. But even if you don't wrap the game up, don't give the ball away. Don't give the ball away. Simple as that. Uh, on the set pieces, yeah, it's great having a set piece specialist who's on the bench. We need one who's in the team. Yeah, you know, I was so annoyed with that though. Give it to someone, an easy pass, and even if you just keep the ball. Even if you just keep the ball. Uh, Rondon, fantastic cameo from Rondon again, wasn't he? What a little cameo that was! His little he he did a he did a nutmeg on one of the West Ham players, but he was he was he did it in so slow motion that their player didn't even see it because it was so slow that the, their player couldn't. It was like bullet time in the Matrix. He did it in such slow motion that the West Ham player couldn't readjust himself because I don't really. I don't think he could comprehend how it had been done. It had been done so slow. Um, incredible stuff by Rondon there. I'd give him a six. Uh, Dwight McNeil. Wait, Dad, run around a little bit. C- do us a favour, Dwight. Do you know for the next two weeks, find a wall 
a Finch farm, just a just a innocent innocent wall, right? And just k- practice kicking the ball against it with your right foot. Just pr- I don't know how a professional footballer has got to the stage of being in the Premier League like he is. That is so one footed. It is incredible, incredible how he has managed to do that. So find the wall. Every day, and then every day after training for an hour, like Ryan Giggs, Ryan Giggs, let's say about Ryan Giggs better, but Ryan Giggs said that all he used to do was practice kicking the ball with his right foot against the wall. And literally, it's your job, isn't it? It's your job to be able to do something basic with your right foot. He is the most left-footed player I've ever witnessed in my life. It's like... It literally is just there for standing on. Like, he won't even attempt to play passes with his right foot. It's mad. It's absolutely mad. Just kick a ball against the wall for an hour, please. And honestly, you're a professional footballer. It is literally your job to be able to just do basic things with your wrong... I reckon I've got a better left foot than he's got a right foot. Genuinely. Genuinely. Because he won't even attempt to do things with his right foot... And it's so annoying because it's literally your job to be able to kick a ball. That's like that's that's sort of like the main part of your job, kicking a ball. So stay behind after training for an hour and just work. Get a coach and just say, "Can we work on my right foot? Can we work on my right foot?" Because and you know what? If you go, if you do enough training, you should have. You've got. You're gonna have ten more years of your career. Work on your right foot, please. Because it will give you so many more. Because everyone knows that all he does is get on his left foot. And he just he just get on his left side. And that's it. Which is, everyone knows, is the crib side. So, yeah. There you go. Three points. Happy days. Happy days. We got there. Uh, seven points. Seven games, seven points. The ref was garbage. The ref was absolutely garbage. They had about three fouls and then he booked Connor Cody for nothing. He booked Connor Cody because Antonio decided to do a forward roll. Absolute nonsense. And we probably should have had a penalty as well. We probably should have had a penalty. Gray was definitely clipped. Definitely clipped. So, so the core is six and a half. Rondon six, McNeil six. There you go. Um, there you go. There you go. You've had a bit of everything, haven't you? You've had a bit of Matrix and you've had a bit of Snoop. Two weeks to enjoy this win. There you go. Uh, there you go. So make sure you check out my classic reaction. There is some like match day stuff on there as well. The, after the goal and, and after the game and Frank Lampard and obviously my reaction as well make sure you check that out make sure you check Baz's videos out as well and uh, yeah we'll be doing the final word tomorrow we're not off we're not off no 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 we don't take days off on Toffee TV certainly not on Toffee TV Premier we do not take days off so there you go make sure you uh, head over to Toffee TV Premier tomorrow for oh, okay so Grey wasn't whatever, whatever, I'm just moaning at the ref, leave me to moan, Toffee TV Premier tomorrow for the final word live, There's, there'll be nothing to watch tomorrow, so you might as well sign up for Toffee TV Premier, because there's literally nothing to watch, so come and join us, make sure you check out Baz's videos as well, there you go, thanks for watching, see you later. <laughs>